My name is Emily Jackson from The Great Family Adventure, and today I'm going to share with you five of my family's favorite national parks. Let's start with number one. One of our absolute favorites is the Sequoia National Forest. Located in California, it has some of the biggest trees in the world. Oh, we had the biggest tree ever? Yeah. Whoa! Not only are they some of the biggest, but they're some of the oldest. My kids really enjoyed getting to know the names and just the history behind these magnificent trees. Go down, 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 and down, down, and it's the biggest twist in the world was that one. Like yeah, the what, what's the, the name of that one? Daniel Sherman. General Sherman. Just being surrounded by the trees themselves was quite magical on its own. So instead of just walking through the forest and seeing the occasional big tree, this was just being surrounded by giants from the second you enter the park. The park themselves does a really good job of explaining the history of the trees and the obstacles they've had to overcome to turn into that beautiful, magical forest. Another thing that's really nice about Sequoia National Forest is that it's very compact. So if you wanna get in there, not have to hike too far, you can really picnic and base yourself just around some of the most famous big trees and not have to move too far. Number two is Yellowstone. I know it's a little cliche, but at the same time, this year in 2022 was our very first year visiting it as a family, and it was totally worth the wait. I did not anticipate seeing near as much wildlife as we ended up seeing. Even from the beginning, before we even crossed into Yellowstone, we saw so many animals that the kids ended up wanting to be on the lookout for the entire duration of the trip. If you wanted to go check out the geyser and some of the other springs, such as the Grand Prismatic Spring, it's not a far walk at all, and it's definitely worth it. Be sure before you go check out Old Geyser that you check the times with the park that they anticipate it blowing. So it goes about every two hours, and it's not the best spot to just go and chill for two hours, because there's so much other activity to do. So be sure to check out when they anticipate it blowing, and then schedule and plan your day around that. It's really important to also check out the Grand Prismatic Spring. It truly does have all the colors of the rainbow, and even on a cloudy day, sunny day, it is a beauty to withhold. So definitely make sure that you put that on your plan because you cannot visit Yellowstone without checking Grand Prismatic. There's actually great bike paths throughout the entire park. So when my kids get a little older, I'm really excited to go back to Yellowstone and do a lot of the exploring via the bike path. That brings us to number three, Mesa Verde. Mesa Verde in Colorado is one of my favorite national parks. The reason being is that I remember visiting it as a small child myself, and so it was really exciting for me to bring my kids back there. Mesa Verde is a structure in the walls of Native American history is just everywhere. So if you're teaching your kids, homeschooling your kids, or just want your kids to see how people lived centuries ago, definitely go check out Mesa Verde because it's the most intact and inspiring and truly just eye-opening for the children and for adults as well. If you're going to Mesa Verde and you want to actually visit the structures themselves and walk around them, be sure to plan your guide and your trip early in the morning. There are only certain hours that they do it and you're going to want to make sure you get there early so that way you don't miss out on the opportunity to hike around the structures. If you're visiting Mesa Verde, be prepared for a lot of driving from location to location. So there's a lot of different angles to actually view the dwellings and it's a big loop. So when you're driving in and you first cross through the gate, be prepared to drive for an additional 30, 45 minutes once you've entered the park. Number four on our family's favorite national parks is actually Arches. So I don't know if many of you have been to Arches in Utah, but Arches is super cool because it's how I imagine just being on Mars. There's beautiful red rock everywhere you look. And then the Arches themselves are truly amazing. There's a lot of hiking at this park. So my kids, I've done it twice, three times with them now. And they really love it because they keep saying, this is what it feels like to be on the moon because it really does feel like you're in a whole new world. The one thing you need to be really prepared for at Arches is one, it gets very hot. So if you're gonna visit Arches, be sure to really pay attention to the weather. Uh, if it's gonna be hot, go in the early morning. It makes a big difference. 
Another thing to keep in mind when it comes to arches is to make sure uh, that you bring lots of water and snacks. Because once you're in there, like I said, it is like being on the moon. You're completely on your own. There's not many service stations or anything of that sort. So be sure to pack heavily on your snacks and water because you may just want to keep hiking. Number five on national parks is a little bit different. It's in Hawaii, it's the Hawaii Volcanoes. So this one's more recent from our family. We just saw it this past winter. And the reason we went is because what kid doesn't want to check out lava? And that's exactly what happened. We went to the Hawaii Volcano Park and it was absolutely incredible. We went in the late afternoon. By doing that, it allowed us to actually see the lava at nighttime, and we really love that because once it gets dark and everyone has their lights off, the amount of red glow that comes out of the lava field itself is really neat. So the kids really enjoyed that we were not only exploring a national park, but the added adventure of doing it late at night, past bedtime, uh, made them even more excited to go check it out. So those are my five family favorite national parks. I have some personal favorites too, but all in all, I think those are the five that we've had the most fun at as a family. Um, they either have you know, minimal hiking or the hiking is totally worth it because it's such a unique experience. Uh, but a couple things to remember when you're visiting any national park is to be prepared. So one, understand the rules. A lot of times it's confusing. There are certain things that kids want to touch or play with that they just shouldn't. There's a lot of history there that needs to be preserved. So make sure you have a sit down with your kids to explain to them what the rules and the proper etiquette might be before you get there. Another thing to remember is that snacks and water, there can be lines or you can have to wait or there's just anticipate a lot of people, particularly post COVID. It seems like a lot of people are visiting the national parks and the snack bars and everything are not only usually overpriced, but they're also really long. And so if you have a dehydrated, hungry kid, it's not fun for anyone waiting in that line. So be sure to pack a cooler with everything you need for the day to make sure that you're ready to go at any given point and you've got everything you need to just have an awesome day. When visiting the national parks, another thing to think about is setting the kids up for a game or some form of success. So instead of being like, look, isn't everything around us so beautiful? It's like, let's see how many trees we can find that look like this. Or let's see if someone can find a heart-shaped knot in the tree. Or let's see how many birds your kids can find. Make it exciting, make it fun, make them engage with the outdoors around them.